All right. Keeping the plastic out of the river, Clean Water Act represent. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there with that camera on top of a tripod with a guy standing behind it. Uh, hey, you ever think about what makes your beverages acidic? The dentist says that's bad for you. And what's alkaline water? Let's go in the lecture room and talk about it right now. Okay, now. Hey folks, thanks for watching Science with Mike. Today we're gonna to talk about the alkalinity or the acidity of your beverages. But before we do that, and we're gonna measure some alkalinity and acidity, before we do that, let's talk about how we measure this with the pH scale. Not gonna walk out of frame. Cut. A little background. First of all, acids, when they dissolve in water, produce hydrogen ion. That's the H in what we call pH. Bases, which are the opposites of acids, produce hydroxide ion. Oh, oh, oh. H minus hydroxide. Thanks again, Stanek Claus. And here's the thing. The pH scale is logarithmic, which is basically a way of taking a big wide range of numbers and squeezing it down into something that's easier to talk about. pH is the negative log of the H plus concentration, or how acidic something is. pOH is the negative log of the OH minus concentration, or how alkaline something is. And if you take the negative log of HAT, that's P-H-A-T. Nobody says that anymore. Sorry. You know, if you're on a long car trip and you have to go to the bathroom, you should say, hey, could you pull over at the rest area? I got a negative log. No, don't do that either. Sorry. Okay, so this is where it gets mathy here. The pH range centers around pH 7. And that's because if you had extremely pure water with nothing in it, which you're going to find out doesn't happen, you would have an H plus concentration of 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Take the logarithm of that, that's negative 7. The negative log is 7. That's where the pH of 7 being in the middle comes from. Let's take another example, like your stomach acid. Your stomach acid has a concentration of 0.1. Log of that's negative 1. That's a pH of 1 in your stomach acid. So the lower the number goes, the more acidic. And six numbers in pH is actually a million times more concentrated. And so people will tell you that the pH range goes from 1 to 14. And you know what? That's not true. They're lying to you. Well, maybe they're not lying to you. They just are making it too simple, which is kind of like lying. Sorry. Case in point, that bottle of concentrated hydrochloric acid, which is as strong as you could make it, is 12 moles per liter. The pH of that is negative 1.08. So pH is not bracketed by any specific number. It can go negative and it can go, can go da, above 14, is what I wanted to say. Well, why didn't you say so? Didn't you see me getting all panicked back there? This has been a lot of math. So just for about 15 seconds, let's take a really quick Gratuitous fire break. <laughs> and we're back. Hey, you know what I mentioned earlier that you barely ever get water that's exactly at pH 7. And even if you let pure water stay out in the air, it'll become slightly acidic. And here's why. There's a hidden acid in the air, carbon dioxide. Actually, when carbon dioxide dissolves in water, it'll form an acid called carbonic acid. And that is a mild acid, but nonetheless, it's an acid, and it'll make the pH go below 7. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in the lab, we're going to measure the pH of a bunch of different beverages, but first, I want you to meet a couple of my friends. I'm Lily Litmus. And I'm Larry Litmus. In acid, we're red, and base, we're blue. So let's go measure some samples for you. All right, welcome to the show, Larry and Lily Litmus. Let's go to the lab. This is a gizmo we use in the lab called a pH meter. It's nothing more than an electrode that's kind of connected to this very interesting glass that transfers hydrogen ions. And then it measures a voltage based on the solution it's in. And what we got is we've got some pH 7 buffer, and it's telling us that we're pretty close to 7, 6.94 and now we can test different solutions. All right, check this out. This is seltzer water. 
which is nothing more than carbonated water. Let's see what it turns out for a pH. Remember that CO2, when you put it in water, is acidic. Okay, we're pushing pH 4 here. And, you know, you might not have a pH meter at home. So let's see what Larry and Lily Litmus think of the seltzer water. And we will touch you to Lily. Now, Lily has red litmus. And, oh boy, there's Larry. And you see what happens with litmus, which is nothing more than pigments from some uh, lichens that, that uh, someone discovered. It turns red in acid, and so does the blue litmus paper. The red litmus paper stays red, the blue litmus paper turns red. This is some seltzer water that I opened three days ago. Notice no bubbles? That's because all the CO2 has come out of it. And let's see what this thing's pH runs. And as you can see, the flat seltzer water, which is now mostly water, not that concentrated uh, or carbonated, it's up above pH 5.7. So that's even, you know, like uh, 1.7 pH points. Remember, two pH points is 100 times less concentrated in hydrogen ion. Now let's take some soda pop. Now this is carbonated and has citric acid. So now you got carbonation, which causes acidity, and then you got citric acid in there. And we're pushing pH 3, and that's pretty darn acidic. Ask your dentist about that. I'm not a dentist, but it's not supposed to be great for your teeth. Let's try some alkaline water next. Okay, this says here pH 9.5 or higher. We'll see if that's true. Notice I have not opened this, so I have not allowed the carbonic acid from the CO2 to get in there. And I might even dare to taste this because I've never had alkaline water before. And I guess their claim is true, pH 9.6 something, drifting a little lower, but certainly not going below pH 9.5. All right. As a side note, you have one of the best pH sensors right in your mouth. Acids are usually sour. Bases are usually bitter. Eh, yeah. Mm. Tastes like that time I had a CAT scan. One last one. Dayton tap water. Dayton tap water, right around pH 7. You know, I should have really used a cleaner container. I've been drinking out of this all fall semester, and it's got hard water residue, which, by the way, if you have hard water, that can make your water a little bit alkaline. And uh, maybe that's what's going on here. But check this out. In about pH 7.18 until... Okay, so if you don't want your water to be acidic, don't breathe around it. Thanks for watching. Sign off for us, Larry and Lily. Thanks for watching Science with Mike. Stay hydrated, everybody.